Hello everybody, this is Bud and look at this. As you can see, I have just started i3. I have deleted my i3 config file and this is what you are greeted with uh, if you do so. Or if you have just installed i3 uh, and the first time you run it, you get this uh, first configuration dialog box here. Uh, you have not configured i3 yet. Do you want me to generate a config at homebud.config i3 config? Select yes to generate the config, escape, then you will use the um, system config. We will look at this, what, what, what it really means here, but uh, we select enter. Then it asks us if we want to use the Windows key as the default modifier or the Alt key as the default modifier. Um, and uh, of course you want the Windows key because it's, uh, it's the window manager key, you know. So select that and there, now it has generated the config. The terminal that we see here, uh, that is actually the output of i3. So i3 itself is started from this uh, URXVT terminal here, uh, whatever. One of the most important default key bindings is super or windows key. Let's say windows key. I, I was thinking about this. It's a bit annoying this super mod four, whatever. Everyone knows what the windows key is. So let's just call it that. Um, I will probably mess this up during the video, but windows key and return. That will uh, hopefully create a terminal for you, a new terminal. Uh, and it will be tiled uh, as we can see here. Uh, we already are tiling. Uh, I want to do this because I want to open the text editor that I prefer to use. You might like a different text editor, but I prefer Sublime, so I open that. Uh, another uh, good to know default key binding, or it's actually 10 default key bindings here, are to change um, workspace. Uh, so you have uh, mod here that is um, mod 4 which is the windows key uh, so mod 4 oh, windows key and a number and it will uh, switch to a different workspace so uh, windows key 2 and now i am on workspace 2 you can see the workspace indicators down here to see which workspace you are at windows 3 windows 4 and as you can see we only have two workspaces here uh, if you move away from an empty workspace it will uh, just get deleted so you you will only have workspaces that are either active or that have stuff on them so workspace one have all of this uh, stuff here um, i want to move uh, this uh, sublime window to a new workspace here workspace two and that's a different key binding you hold shift and press a number and then you send uh, a window to a different workspace but it can be good to know that it doesn't uh, change to that workspace also so uh, just to demonstrate that let's bring up a new terminal super return or windows return whatever uh, windows shift and three that will send this uh, this terminal to workspace three there it's there but we are still we are on workspace one but we can see it was created here in the uh, workspace uh, pager thing here whatever all right so this video what is that about um, it's about the i3 config if you haven't guessed it uh, it has been requested on, on the channel uh, quite recently here by a couple of viewers uh, independently uh, asking me for uh, uh, about the i3 config how i have set it up and stuff like that and i thought since i have uh, quite recently here now uh, uh, been been working on i3 as and I thought everything is set up. There are no bugs, no issues whatsoever. It should it, it's a great time to actually make a video uh, like this. Uh, but of course there were uh, bugs and issues, and this is actually day three, take three, or something like that. So, but now I think everything is set up, and hopefully uh, we will get through this. Uh, maybe we should open. Cute browser also here so and I, I will use this workspace one that's just for opening a terminal so i can open a program uh cute browser there and let's put that on workspace three now we have this stupid terminal here but whatever we can have it there who knows it can be useful um yeah and it opens this uh page also 
I updated the wiki. Uh, now I also made some updates, some panic releases here when I discovered these bugs while trying to make this video this weekend. Uh, so um, it should should work now. <laughs> Everything. The thing is, uh, it, um, I never use i3 in this state here, the initial state uh, with the, the default settings. And I discovered a couple of issues uh, with some of my uh, scripts. Uh, if you have the bare bones default settings uh, yeah, enabled, uh, whatever, uh, everything should be fixed. And I'm really glad that I have found these issues and I have promised myself now that uh, this will be a routine when I make these uh, larger releases like this was. Um, I should also make this video. I will not uh, upload it probably, but I will make the video. So I have to uh, explain everything, how it works in the default state and I will probably discover uh, issues every time I do that. But now everything should be working fine. And I have also added um, this to the wiki now. Uh, an example configuration of i3 uh, using the i3 as scripts. Not all of them, but a, a basic uh, uh, configuration. And it is based on the default uh, i3 configuration. So, um, yeah, whatever, we'll, we will look at this uh, in this video. Um, I will do this from scratch, so to speak. But uh, you could, uh, the easy way here is to, whatever, don't watch this video, just grab this config and try it out and it should uh, hopefully work. But it, I guess it can be interesting if you, to, to watch this video and see what everything does. I will explain how it works and such. All right. Um, Number two, this is my actual i3 config and it was generated for us here uh, by that uh, automatic generator thing. Um, there is also the, uh, and you can see the path here in the home directory dot config i3 config. And as you can see, I have some, I have my actual i3 config here as a backup, of course, uh, which I will um, apply when I made this video. Um, I have also this uh, the directory open in the sidebar here. So Etsy slash i3. There, there is that default um, configuration. If you would choose in that um, initial window there, uh, no, use the default, don't generate the config. Then it will still uh, execute and start i3, but it will use this configuration file that is in, in the, the system-wide installed configuration. But if you have a, a file in your home directory in home.config i3, then it will use that file instead. And it is actually active uh, now immediately. All right. Um, so what I will do in this video, I made some notes here. They are probably still valid. Um, I will um, clean up this default config a bit. I will delete all, all comments here just to get rid of some noise uh, so I don't have to scroll that much. But as you can see, it's not that large. It's uh, 200 lines with lots of comments and stuff here. That's a default config. Uh, and there are a, a bunch of uh, settings and key bindings and stuff here that is not relevant at all to this video or, or anything I will talk about. But I will just leave them uh, those settings. For example, the font. We don't have to change the font. It's not relevant to, to what I want to show you here. And yeah, things like this. So I will just leave them. And I have done that in this configuration as well. You can see here, untouched from the default config. You can see all of those uh, default settings here. Uh, I haven't changed anything and they still work, so to speak. So you can still use D menu run or whatever and the terminal with mod return. Um, workspaces, we will not talk about that, change that or anything. All right. Are you prepared? Um, let's do this. Uh, first thing, de delete the comments. So we write a regular expression here. Uh, lines starting with uh, zero or more spaces followed by a sharp and some other characters. Find all of those lines and D, 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 Ramon. Huh, these 
Ah, damn it. I didn't want to delete the, the blank lines there. Okay, whatever. Leave it like this. Delete this crap here. Um, nice. Because I don't need the comments. I know everything about this, so I can... But the comments are good. If you have never used i3 at all, it, it, it's a good idea to uh, keep the comments and read them, of course. Uh, but it will just get a bit noisy here for, for this video. And they are also uh, removed in this uh, example configuration I have here. Instead, I have written my own uh, comments about what's going on. Uh, all right. Note. Um, I will divide the configuration now in, in four parts. So uh, like setting up some variables that we will need. Um, the stuff that we will change or add and the stuff that is not relevant and stuff that I need to uh, set otherwise I will go insane and this part is not included in that example config I showed you on the wiki uh, these are like my personal preferences that I if I don't enable this stuff I, I will go a bit crazy so let's add them uh, first and foremost before we do anything else and it's this key binding and these settings here. So I copy them and let's just add them to the absolute, no, this file. This is also a bit confusing. I should be careful here uh, to not edit this system configuration. Uh, let's close everything except for this one there. All right, this is the config, the active config. Down here, can my uh, uh, key bindings live uh, that I need so I don't go insane. Um, this one, I will use that a lot uh, during this video uh, and it will not be that visible when I do that. Sometimes it will probably be uh, visible because it's when you execute this, sometimes you get an error message. Uh, that's fine, you will see. Um, but what it does is reload the config and the default key binding for this is uh, I think it's mod shift plus C and I just cannot get used to that uh, I need this on uh, mod control R um, focus follows mouse that means um, if I open a terminal make it uh, floating and you can see here when I hover this terminal it activates it or focuses it. It's um, yeah, it's not that weird to understand what it does, but I f I find it very I just find it this annoying. Uh, so I, I disable that, but I don't recommend this setting or whatever. It's it's like my preference, and I get annoyed if it's not enabled. So you you really don't have to do this if uh, you are fine with that function. Um, yeah, that was stupid. Floating modifier. That is, um, as you might expect, what you can press to modify a floating window. So by default, that is set to the same key as you have uh, declared as your preferred um, uh, key here. So by default, it's mod 4, which is the Windows key or the super key, you know. Uh, and that is also the floating modifier. Here we can see the default setting is set to that mod key. And that means you can press the mod key Windows key and then just drag a window without clicking the uh, title bar, which you can also do in i3. You can just drag windows by dragging the title bar. And you can also right click the title bar and then you can resize the window. Um, and this is a great way <laughs> to resize uh, and move windows, just dragging this title bar, no problem. And you can also uh, press the modifier and right click in the window and then you can resize it like this. So you don't need to uh, aim for any corners or anything. And this actually works for uh, tile windows as well. So uh, if I hold that uh, floating modifier, even if it's not floating here now, and then right click, I can now resize without uh, having to aim for that border or anything. It uh, This works fine. Just so you know, uh, but I prefer to have that floating modifier uh, on the Alt key instead because that's the way I like it and I get confused in, if I don't have that setting. So we comment this guy out uh, by prefixing the line with a sharp. Okay, exit this terminal because it's in the way. Um, the other settings. 
Bind Sim Release Button to Kill. What this uh, the key binding does, it's actually a key binding for the mouse button. So that means that button 2, which is the middle mouse button, if that is pressed on the title bar of a window, then it will kill that window. And, and this key binding only have effect on, on the title bar, so it will, you will still have the normal function of button 2. It's only when you press uh, the title bar, so, now, so, so that means you can also close uh, windows by yeah, middle click them. And I think that's nice, I want that. But if you enable that, then you will probably also want to disable scrolling on tabs, which I find uh, very annoying. Um, let's open some more terminals and then we put these in tabs. Now we have a tab container here with uh, Sublime and three terminals. I can also scroll here on the yeah the title bar thing here to switch tabs and I find this quite annoying and especially when you have enabled that closing uh, uh, tabs with the middle click. If you don't enable that, by the way, uh, I didn't realize this, but if you, if I middle click one of these tabs now, it switches to that tab. So um, th these kind of belong together uh, and I, <laughs> I need to have them, otherwise I go a bit crazy. But the most important uh, thing here of all is that I enabled this. Um, this is a key binding. Uh, and here I have to specify the whole window. You have to do that with uh, the mouse buttons. Otherwise, they only have effect on the, the, the title bar. So if you specify whole window and then button 8, and button 8 is the back button of, uh, on the mouse. Uh, and when I press the back, back button, then I want this to happen. I want um, the command x to tool to be executed. An extra tool can do a lot of things. Uh, one is that it can pass um, keys. So this will just send the key backspace. And what that means is when I press the back button on my mouse, it will backspace. So I can backspace with the mouse. And I, I do that all the time. And if I don't enable this, then it will just have the normal back button functionality. And that uh, is very unpredictable for me. In Sublime here, for example, if I would open a bunch of tabs, uh, and I press the back button, it, uh, it switches tabs and forward button, of course, goes the other, other way. Uh, and I guess most people like that, but I don't. I want backspace. And then I have also bound uh, F5 to the forward button so I can refresh uh, web pages, for example, by just pressing forward. Uh, I need this. So they are now added here to the configuration uh, to apply these options that I just added or these settings, we have to reload the config. And as I mentioned, uh, the default key binding is super or Windows Shift C. I press that and now it works. It works fine, nice. Another thing we should uh, change here immediately is this guy here uh, or whatever. No, let's do it now. Otherwise, I will forget this. And because mod R, that is the default key binding to enter the resize mode in i3. Um, uh, but that also happens to be the same key binding I have here in Simple Screen Recorder to pause the recording. And you never know, you might accidentally press this while you're deming, demoing this and then stop the recording and keep on talking for like 30 minutes without realizing that the recording have stopped, you know, and you really don't want to do that. <laughs> so now that that should be taken care of. Uh, but pressing backspace or pressing back button now, you see, I can delete, I can delete text with a mouse. It's incredibly uh, nice. All right, that th these are just my preferences, what I want. Uh, you don't have to copy this stuff, um, but I need to do that. And it's not really related to what we are going to do next here. Because now, um, yeah, let's close these guys. Um, open the notes. Now uh, we will sort out the, the stuff that we want to change and the stuff that we don't want to change um, in the config here. To just take a take a minute or something. Um, resize and stuff here. That is something we will talk about. Uh, but this guy, this guy, this guy. 
the workspace uh, stuff here. I don't care about that. I don't care about this. So this one is kind of related. So let's let's keep that. And the bar, we will not configure the bar anything in this video. This is not that video, you know. Um, then these guys, we will talk about them actually, but not these. This, everything here is related here. Huh. Weird. I don't know how that ended up there, but let's just delete that. Also, accidentally I pasted that somehow. Um, there. Well, actually, this one will be relevant. Um, so let's let's just move that out of the way. But these and this. Well, I guess this one also. This and the font setting, we don't care about that. There. Some blank lines. You see how convenient this is to do with the mouse. There. This is what we will focus on. Just this, this stuff here. Uh, we will change most of it actually. Um, and add uh, key bindings that will execute the i3 as uh, commands instead. Uh, 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 yeah, all right. So variables. Um, the thing with i3 as and my uh, my way of using i3 is. Uh, that I, I try to make uh, use of the direction keys, like left, down, up, and right, uh, for a lot of different things. So I can do so many things with just uh, those four uh, keys, which could be left, down, up, and right, you know, the arrow keys, the cursor keys, or you could set them to like VI navigation, like H A K L, whatever. There are four directions. No one can argue about that left down upright and I, I, I try to a lot of things are related to that and, and it makes to me it makes it easy uh, to have uh, such a complicated um, window layout that I actually do because everything is handled with these direction keys it will become clear soon so that that is kind of important to get that right um, the problem is the default configuration i3 configuration doesn't get that right at all. They, it's uh, kind of bonkers. Um, because here we can see uh, the default key bindings for focus left, focus down, focus up, and focus right. The de this is the default configuration. It's set to mod plus J, mod plus K, mod plus L, and so on, you know. Looks like uh, the default uh, VI navigation, you know, H, J, K, L to, uh, use them as the alternative to arrow keys. The problem is this is not that. This is uh, this, but shifted one column on the keyboard to the right. So now, you know, H is supposed to be left and J is down. But here we can see J is left and K is down. So it's like shifted <laughs> one to, to um, the right. I guess it's this would be... Uh, uh, or no, this JKL semicolon. Uh, it, it's really awkward that they have done it like this in i3. And they have also hard coded this. Uh, as you can see, the, it, it's the characters here. So you have to, if you want to use the VI uh, characters, you have to change it here, you have to change it here, and you have to change it here. It's not a big deal, but it's weird. Uh, and it gets even weirder when you look into that uh, system configuration file, uh, which is installed here in Etsy i3. Because here, for some reason, they, uh, the directions are declared with variables. So here we have uh, four variables, up, down, left, and right, and they have the value L, K, J, and semicolon. I don't know why they don't do this in the uh, uh, generated config here. 
because then it would be much easier to change change this into like <laughs> what you actually want you know but what what would be even better is why can't they ask this as a question because they know that people don't want to use this no one wants this it's only one person in the whole world that thinks this is a good idea and that is Mikael Stapelberg the, the <laughs> creator of i3 uh, so if we add these uh, variables here uh, you might think yeah then then it gets easy we just change this to h a k n l but <laughs> as you can see that doesn't work either because they they are in the wrong order here so you have to be careful left is the first one ah this is something we also have to do um you see i'm pressing caps lock here and uh, expecting it to go into escape uh, or normal mode here but what I get is caps lock and I don't want that and that's because my uh, keyboard layout is not active because I usually activate that in my i3 config so let's just fix that we don't have to say anything more about that but now it's active and now I can press escape with caps lock <clears throat> all right so left have to uh, have to be first left and then we have uh, down and then we have up and then we have right so this is uh, the order you want these uh, variables in uh, and then change them to HAKL if you want to but worth mentioning here uh, the default generated config it have these JKL semicolon but it also have alternatives for the uh, arrow keys so both of these work uh, so we could just use the arrow keys and make everything simpler here uh, except that I don't have any arrow keys on my stupid keyboard here so I actually need to use uh, an al alternative uh, and I can I just can't use this JKL semicolon uh, I have to have this VI uh, uh, style and it's so weird you know it's e e even those who don't use Vim or VI or whatever they, they know about these uh, directions it's it's like um, part of the uh, unix collective consciousness or whatever you want to call it you know everyone knows about this no one wants this no no one no or one person whatever let's let's not uh, whatever they can have whatever they want and i also have an uh, have a suspicion why they have done it like this uh, or i don't know why they want to use semicolon jkl here but uh, why it's hard coded and not why they are not using the variables here because as you can see, uh, you will probably want to, to name those variables left, down, up, and right. But as you can see, that's the exact same names as the keys have here, uh, except that they have a capital, um, they are capitalized, and there's no dollar prefix. But I guess it would look very confusing to have these variables here, like we will add now. So focus left, that will now look like this. Focus down now look like this focus up looks like that and focus right looks like that right um, so I guess that's the reason why they have hard-coded uh, uh, the characters like this and I, I think that that actually makes uh, sense in one way um, but I will also delete here uh, the, the arrow key um, versions because uh, to remove noise and it also it, this even gets confusing for me when I'm talking about this and I have to refer to the correct one here so I will just delete this uh, <laughs> to not confuse myself anymore uh, and as you can see they do the exact same thing and that also means that you can have multiple key bindings uh, for the same command but you cannot have um, multiple key bindings with the same key binding then you will get an error and we will probably encounter one of those errors immediately here. If I reload this config, we get an error. I knew, I knew this because I have done this <laughs> a couple of times. Uh, when you get this snag bar, it say here, here, you have an error in your i3 config file. Click this button, show errors. It will open a terminal uh, with that error. Uh, so here it say duplicate key binding in i3 config file. Um, something with the key sim h something with focus left command so okay we have a duplicate key binding that's the error 
uh, we can close this snag bar and then we we need to find that duplicate we need to fix this otherwise it, it will not load your i3 config it will use the the last uh, working uh, version of i3 of, of the config so uh, the duplicate key binding is of course this one you know mod uh, plus left um, since left is h here so we have mod plus h for focus left but that is also one of the default uh, key bindings uh, let's see now I didn't I god damn it uh, here, here it is <laughs> here it is um, let's remove this line here this is one of the default key bindings is uh, mod plus h is split h uh, which is a command in i3 so to fix this problem we comment that guy out and now it's not a problem anymore Except that we can now, we, we, if either you do this or you change this key binding to something else or you change this key binding to something else. Point being, you cannot have the same key binding, of course, for multiple commands. Um, but now it should be fixed. If I reload the config, we will not get that error. And that also means that I can now use these uh, uh, new bindings here. To demonstrate them, let's change this. Uh, um, layout here i think it's e then we are back to split and let's hide this uh, simple screen recorder window we can close this error also so focus left mod and left and left in my case is h here so pressing h mod h you see it changes the focus no no big deal focus right changes focus like this focus up Nothing happens because there's nothing above. Focus down, nothing happens, nothing above. Cool. Okay. Just wanted to see that it worked. Uh, now we need to change uh, this and this also to use the variables. So let's do that quickly here. Use some sublime multiple cursor magic here. Uh, left k is down. L is up and semicolon is right all right there now it should work um yeah here it's also duplicate in this mode here so let's delete these guys right we have set up the variables we have um, fixed this annoying vi shenanigan thing Reload config, everything is working fine. Now we can also test the move uh, um, commands here. So that's uh, mod plus shift key and then a direction. So if I move right here, for example, you see it moves this window in, in the layout. And I think I can even move it one more. And something happened. Um, it's very confusing, in my opinion, uh, how uh, when you first start using i3, this. Uh, how this layouting and stuff work here because it's uh, it's uh, very much um, manual how you set up i3 and it can be difficult to get a nice layout um, we'll try to fix that and you have also seen me modifying the layout so i can just press uh, mod w here and then now it's tabbed but now we can see we have just two tabs and then this tab have these three windows it's it's a bit uh, confusing and difficult and it's difficult for me too to do this all this manually and that's why i created all these scripts uh, to get a little bit more automatic layouting thing you everything will become clear uh, but uh, one thing i want to do here is um, uh, these three key bindings so you can change from god damn it i, I actually didn't want this i want this I, I don't even know how to do that how to get all of these windows in the same group so if i move everything to the right focus right move everything to the left here well, I, I meant left before but whatever there move that to the far left is everything in the same group now no yeah whatever now we have one tab with one tab in it or something like that you see how confusing it is we have to fix this we will do that uh, but i'm changing uh, layouts here with um, 
mod W to, to get tab layout and mod E to get like back to the normal layout, the split layout or whatever. If I press mod E again, it will toggle to a vertical split uh, as we have here. Um, uh, let's close some of these terminals. <clears throat> you can actually do all of this with one single key binding. Uh, and I want to do that immediately here. So you see the last one here, that actually have two layouts. Uh, it toggles split here. But you can just add tab and stacking to that toggle key binding here. Um, and now I think if everything is working, I also reload. If I press mod E now, nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, that means that we also have to add the two individual splits here. So split V and split H. Now I think it would work. So this is a bit secret, but it's a night. God damn it. God damn it. It doesn't work. Ah, uh, uh, it's probably this stupid window here that is not part of the same group or whatever it's. Uh, okay, now super E, super E, make some more terminals. There. Okay, now we have this in a group at least. Uh, so now uh, I'm pressing super E or mod E, Windows E. Uh, you see I lost my, my thread there, started saying super key uh, when it's the Windows key. Uh, so Windows key and E will toggle now between all four different layouts that, you, that the container can have. And here we can see vertical split, it looks like this. Tabbed, it's this. Stacked, it's just like tabbed but with a different layout of the tabs basically. And then horizontally split, which is the default uh, split uh, or layout. So that means we can get rid of these two. That's nice because it frees up some good key bindings here. Uh, and you only have to remember one single key here. Mod E, that will toggle between the layouts. You don't have to remember, oh, toggle stack, that's S. And then, you know, I want tab, this W, or did I want the E? It's weird. It's better to just have this on one, in my opinion. Uh, all right. Notes. Don't get sidetracked. Variables. We have talked about it. JKL. What the... F I3 Asify. Let's do this. So, these are... Ah, and we also added the layout toggling. Good. Then it's just this stuff left. Uh, but it, it will actually take some time here. Um, pasting that. So, to remind us what we are doing. Let's add focus here first. Uh, focus will replace the default uh, focusing uh, uh, way of focusing in i3. Uh, the reason I want to do that uh, is because I use tabbed containers a lot in i3. So now we have these tabbed containers. Let's just do some different text here so we know that they are different. Um, with the default i3 focus uh, thing, if you would focus left here from this uh, uh, window, which is this terminal, this will happen. Is it switches focus to the tab to the left. And if I do it again, left goes here, do it again. Now we are at Sublime. Uh, what I actually want to happen here is uh, if I focus left from this window, it should bring me to the window to the left, the Sublime window, the visible window. Uh, on the screen. I think you can achieve this. Let's try it, see if it works. If I press Windows key and A, you see now all of these windows have focus, but it's actually the parent container of these uh, uh, windows that has focus now. And now if I, if I do focus left, it focuses sublime. Uh, but it's just very cumbersome to, to use this uh, Windows A uh, focus parent. It's, it's extremely confusing to, to work with that, in my opinion. Um, so that's why I created i3 VisWiz. It will focus around the desktop uh, by, by using the visual windows. Uh, it just makes everything make more sense. Um, so. 
before anything else, make sure that you have installed uh, i3 as, you know. If you are using Arch, you can find it on AUR, so search for i3 as and install it. There, let's just do that. Uh, it's just a couple of uh, bash scripts, so uh, it takes no time at all to install and download. Uh, and it can also be a good idea to always do this when you install weird stuff from uh, AUR to pacman ql to list uh, a package that you have installed. Uh, and then you do i3s, and then it will list all the files that was installed with that package here. And you can see there are a bunch of files installed to the bin directory, and that means these are available commands, basically. Uh, and you can also see that all of those commands have uh, a man page, so when in doubt, issue the man page. Also worth noting here is that these man pages are the same um, have the same content as these uh, wiki pages here so if, if you do man i3 king for example you will get the exact same content as you can get on this wiki just so you know um, and to change focus we use i3 viswis if you just execute it like this in a terminal it will print some weird stuff here uh, and do nothing else seems useless but if you also pass a direction for example left it will focus left but it will not focus left like i3 because i3 would focus the tab to the left this will focus sublime um, which is what we want so all we want to do is replace these guys or let's copy them so we have a backup in case we mess up you know because well god damn it you never know you never know There. All we need to do is change these to i3 whiz, whiz, and then pass the direction we want to focus, and then everything should work, right? Uh, reload the config. Hmm, it kind of worked. It shouldn't work. Uh, okay, focus mod plus right. Now we got the error. Okay, yeah. We didn't get the error here, it didn't warn us that this doesn't work, because I knew this wouldn't work. Um, we'll probably say something about an illegal command or something like that here. Um, error expected one of these tokens, it's like, what it means here is that these, this is an invalid command, because in i3 the only, va only valid commands, they are actually printed here. These are the only accepted uh, uh, arguments to a uh, key binding. Uh, and i3viswis is not one of them, um, because i3viswis is an external command. But you can, of course, execute external commands from i3. The default one here, focus, that's an internal command. Uh, if I execute that in a terminal, it will just say command not found, because this is internal in i3. Um, so to execute an external command, which i3viswis is, you have to use exec. And when you use exec, also use no startup id. And you will see in the default config here that they use this no startup id, exec, no startup id to execute external commands here as well. And they use this no startup id for everything, almost. Um, if you don't do that, uh, <laughs> then uh, you will get an annoying mouse cursor. It will turn into this waiting mouse cursor for about 10 seconds or something. It's extremely annoying uh, and I don't understand why it's not the other way around because as you can see, even in the default config, you have to specify this for almost every command here. Otherwise it, it gets weird. Uh, but that's just how it is. Save that, reload the config, pressing super R, Changes focus here to the terminal, pressing super left. I saying super now, whatever. I will mix this up constantly. Uh, so now we have um, this with handling the focus and it doesn't uh, switch focus now to the, these tabs. The annoying thing with that is that how are we supposed to switch focus to a different tab? Because sometimes you want to do that, you know. Uh, for that purpose, I created another script uh, called i3flip. 
so let's add key bindings for that as well here. Bind zoom, mod, I like this on tab. We need to do exec, no start up id, i3 flip, next. And then we do one for prev. And that I like to have that on so mod shift plus tab. Nice. Okay, reload. And now we can switch tabs with uh, mod plus tab or Windows key plus tab or whatever you want to call this. As you can see, it cycles tabs here within the same group. Um, the neat thing with this uh, i3 flip is that it also works with. Um, other layout. So if we have this layout, we can still press mod plus tab to cycle within the same group. Uh, it doesn't matter what kind of layout it is. Uh, and there is also, uh, you can add this. I like to have, have it, uh, and I recommend you adding it too. Is that I like uh, super, god damn it, mod w, not mod workspace, uh, mod q. That's what my, my preferred key bindings for this. And then I add the move option to i3 flip. And then I can move uh, containers or tabs with the Q and W here. So Q, you see it moves it upwards, previous. And I keep pressing uh, mod Q here and it just do, do this and I can move the other way. That and it works in all, all the layouts as well. So you can move a tab with this if you wanted to do that. I find that quite useful actually. And it never moves it out of the uh, out of the layout, so to speak, because it could also move windows with these keys. So mod shift left. If I would press that here, it will move uh, this window to the left. And as you expect, moves it to um, the left. <laughs> but if I do it again, moves it here, it moves it out of the tab group here and out here. And yeah, I also find that a bit annoying. So I three, I, I much rather use I3 flip to, to do that thing, flipping tabs and moving the tabs inside a container. Um, and there's not much more to say about that. Um, all right, we have finished the focus uh, stuff here. Now it's time to uh, fix the, the move commands as well. And also it might sound uh, and look like a nothing burger, all of this, you know, create a terminal here, move it up. So now we have this layout, you know, you can focus around this with the default uh, i3. It's, it, it might look like completely unnecessary to, to replace this focus function to do this. And in one way it, it maybe is for, for some people. But you will see uh, when we are done here, we will uh, have this i3 FIDA layout set up and stuff like that. And everything is related to that, really, especially what we will do now, uh, the i3 corn. And that that will definitely look like, hey, that that looks like a lot of work for like no functionality. But it is uh, important, actually, to set this up if you want to use i3 FIDA, which we will take uh, as the last uh, part of this video. So i3 corn, what that does is uh, it lets you both move and resize windows with the same key binding. Uh, uh, um, let's move these guys out of the way here. Down here, it's fine. Uh, in the default i3 configuration, um, when you want to resize a window, you use this, uh, yeah, as you remember, I changed this to mod plus mod one here, which is the alt key plus R. So I didn't clash with my recording uh, uh, hot key. So if I press this mod, alt and R, now I am in resize mode. And you can see that uh, in the i3 bar, you can see, yeah, it says resize here. And that means that no, now these keys are the only key bindings that are active in i3, uh, which in turn means that uh, if I would, for example, press uh, mod plus tab here to switch tab, nothing happens because this uh, key binding uh, doesn't work. We are in this mode here and only these key bindings work. So I guess the first thing to uh, <laughs> 
figure out here is how to escape this mode. And that is um, one of these, uh, return, escape or mod R, which we should absolutely not uh, press. Uh, so return or escape, and as you can see, no, no modifiers here. So just the escape key will uh, change the mode to default, which means, yeah, the default normal mode. And then now tab switching, for example, works. Um, mod alt r resizing but the other keys here left down up right same thing here no uh, modifiers you can just press uh, left and right down and up and as you could see nothing happened when i press down and up because you cannot resize uh, the height of a tile window like this um, so that's how resizing works and that's it's the same thing for uh, if, if the window would be floating uh, you also do this super or mod alt R. We are in resize mode. Now I can resize this guy. Now it's much slower resize for one. And I'm pressing the four different directions here. Left, right, up and down. And as you can see, we can only resize in two directions. Like uh, this way and this way. Up and down, left and right. But only these borders. Uh, I find this like completely useless uh, to resize a floating window with these uh, key bindings. And the best way to do this is to just resize with the mouse as I have shown you. Uh, but sometimes you actually want to be able to resize a, a floating window with uh, key bindings. And that is something I also uh, have... Um, uh, that, that is one functionality that you get with i3 Corn. Um, Another thing is that um, I also find this mode a bit annoying when you just want to resize a tiled window, like changing the width of it. Uh, it's, it's annoying to have to enter a mode uh, and then just to re change the width like this and then exit the mode and stuff like that. I, I, I much rather prefer to just resize the, the window immediately. And for tiled windows, it's actually, it makes more sense to use the key bindings uh, to resize a tiled window than it is to resize a floating window with key bindings. But often you just want to like change the width a little bit of a tiled window or something like that. Um, whatever, let's let's uh, apply i3 corn here. So it's the same thing. Exec, or let's do this. Copy these guys, comment them out, paste them. And then we paste them again because we will add now outside of the mode we will add both move and uh, resize um, but for resize we use control as a modifier that's what i like to have um, then instead of the command move we execute exec no start up ID and then I3 very difficult to spell but this is how we spell it corn um, but we also need to specify the move command here and I think it's also a good idea to add speed zero and I know this is a bit uh, it's a lot here with I3 corn uh, but in my opinion, it's definitely worth it. Um, then we add same stuff here, but for resize. This, but here we set speed, and then I like something like 30 or something, something like that. Um, and we also have to specify, God damn it, the, the type of operation here, which is size and I'm, I'm sorry I wish I named this resize instead but whatever I might fix that actually so you can use both uh, size and resize there or no, I also want this you see I am a bit <laughs> I have uh, I have uh, some OCD problems so I need to do things like this otherwise I also get uh, crazy or crazier all right, uh, we need this, uh, but we also need a special mode for i3 corn to work. Um, and uh, I have actually here in the wiki, if you open i3 corn, 
look at the usage here or the wiki page you can see there is an example configuration here for i3 corn um, and here we uh, we do exactly what i just configured in in the config so i don't know why i didn't do this just open this page and cop copy paste this stuff but now we do that or the reason is there is actually a problem with just copy pasting stuff you shouldn't just copy paste things not even from your own wiki page because i know that there is an issue with this the issue is that here in that uh, example configuration i am actually using these left down up right not variables or anything that means the the arrow keys and uh, i don't have an arrow keys we need to change these again here to our variable versions so do that quickly here left and then we have uh, i should also change the order of them here they are or no they are right right up and right there so if everything is working now pray to the demo gods reload i3 config no errors that's that's something and now uh, i should be able to resize this window for example with uh mod control left mod control r will uh, change the size of, of this tiled window mod control left and it changes the window and it uh, changes it with uh, 30 pixels at a at a time here so you can hold the key it works fine it's good uh, if you do the same key binding on a floating window mod control left You'll see now it changes the title of that window to resize top left and it also changes this uh, into this size mode. That's also something I regret that I don't call this like i3 corn mode or whatever but it's called size mode and it needs to be called size mode. Because you see the difference here with the default i3 config you press the specific key binding to enter the mode. Here it is the mode is entered uh, by i3 corn and it depends if, if the window is floating then it will enter the mode. If it's tiled it will not enter the mode and immediately start resizing. <clears throat> um, and how it works now with i3 corn is that you can resize. Um, I, I like to think of it like this that uh, you, you move a specific corner and now we are moving top left corner because that's what it say here. So that means if I press left in this mode, uh, left, down, up, right, without any modifiers, that will um, just pass uh, the directions and speed 30 here. So left, up, down, right, up, left, down, up. And I can move this corner instead of, of um, in the default configuration, it's this corner or something. But if you want to, you can also change the corner uh, by pressing the, the resize key bindings they have a, a, a slightly different function here inside the mode i know it's a bit confusing but it is actually quite intuitive to use this so if i change this to a sup mode control right now it's a bottom right and then now i'm resizing the bottom right corner and i can change it to uh, top right now i'm resizing the top right corner instead and i can of course select bottom left so four corners for directions. How are you supposed to know which corner you are selecting? There is a logic to this. And the logic is the VI navigation. Yet again, you have H, J, K, L. Everyone knows about this. Left, down, up, right. Divide these two into two groups here. You have the left group and you have the right group. Um, so of course these should uh, manip uh, target the left corner. So one of them should target the, the upper corner. One of them should target the bottom corner. Which one do you think makes mo most sense to target the, the bottom corner? H, which translates to left, or J, that translates to down. Of course it's down is the bottom left corner. And then H have to be the upper left corner. And same logic here. Uh, K is up uh, in VI navigation speak, you know. So that targets the upper right corner and L targets the bottom right corner. That's uh, the logic here. Um, it doesn't really matter. Even if you don't use the HAKL, uh, use arrow keys here as well, you will quite quickly get used to this, I, I believe. Uh, 
But it also, if we would uh, move the window here instead of resizing, so just pressing super shift, I say super all the time, uh, wh whatever, uh, mod shift left. Same thing again now, we enter the size mode, but now it's a move here instead. So it's the same mode, uh, but now we will move the window instead because that's what it say here. And now we can also see the coordinates of, of uh, the window. I remove that from the size uh, uh, mode uh, or when it's inside, then you only see the corner because it was like, it's difficult to get the, the coordinates. Um, it, it, it did cost too much. Uh, I had to sacrifice too much performance, so to speak, to do that in size uh, operations, but move operations, it, it's fine. So when you move the window, it will change those numbers. You can see the X, Y uh, position. Um, and uh, the nice thing here is that you can just use the same um, uh, key bindings for everything. Uh, in the in this mode also, I in, in this uh, demo version here, I have two um, to an alternative key binding here. If you hold Shift and press a direction, it will do the same thing, but it will uh, do it with a different speed. So holding Shift and pressing left, for example. It's like more fine-tuned, it only, only moves the window 5 pixels uh, at a time, but without shift it moves it faster and uh, less precise, 30 pixels at the time. And the same, same thing works for, for resize. And I can also change here from move, if I want to resize the, the top left corner here for example, I just press uh, mod control and left, and that will select the top left corner, resize mode, and now using the same key bindings everything is nice. And you can also go back to the move uh, operation by pressing just M here. And now I am in move operation thing. It, it, it's weird, I want to say mode all the time, you know, but th that kind of makes, get, gets a double meaning here in this context. It's, it, it's a bit weird, but it works. Uh, uh, and the reason you, you might want to do this is otherwise, let's say you are resizing a corner, you don't want to exit the mode and then uh, re move the window to get into the move operation. Instead, you can just stay in the mode, do everything you want to do, and then press escape to get out. Yeah, that's of course, you press escape to get out of the mode. Uh, there's uh, these also, uh, just quickly. When you are in the size mode, when you are in the size mode, uh, you can press uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, and that will move the window like this. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, if you wanted to do that. And you can also move it from there, you know, so whatever. That's what i3corn is doing with floating windows. With tiled windows, it will um, just do the, the resize and move them normally. Um, so let's close this guy. We have seen resize here. I can uh, do uh, mod control left right here to resize this. Um, if I move it mod uh, shift direction, so for example right, you see it moves it now. Now it's part of this tab container here. And I can move it left, it's out of that. I can move it uh, right and up and then it's here, whatever. It, it, just works as uh, expected, as normally. Um, but there is more to this, and we will see uh, that the real reason why I need to have this i3 corn setup is related to the last part here that we will set up, and that is i3 fida. An i3 fida, it's a layout that I have created, um, and of course, uh, Please read uh, the wiki pages here or the man pages about these commands and stuff because uh, there's lot, lots of things that I don't mention in this video that you can find in, in the doc documentation here. I tried to keep it like concise and, and short this documentation but there is a lot, some of these commands there is a lot uh, to them so to speak. But i3 fida, I have talked about it before many many times in the in videos, in earlier videos. But in case you don't know, it's it's a it's an advanced simple grid based layout. Um, and to start using that layout, you uh, replace 
the float toggling uh, key binding, which I I haven't really mentioned that, but sometimes you know I make a win window uh, floating, I press this key binding, mod shift space that toggles the floating state of a window, uh, and that works fine. The default key binding works fine. There's not nothing wrong with that uh, functionality. No reason to replace that. Uh, also, just short here, how it works is that now it's floating. If I the last tiled window was uh, sublime here, for instance, and I make that tiled again, it uh, places it uh, next to that tiled uh, the last selected tiled window. So you can see there, so doink doink. Uh, but if this was the last selected window, it will place itself next to that. And also pay attention here. This is just one window, but it's still. Uh, have that tabbed layout here. So now it uh, places itself next to that uh, tiled window, which happened to have that tiled layout. That's how float, uh, floating uh, windows work here. Uh, there is also this key binding, which is something I, I really need to add this to my own uh, um, configuration. I never use this, but it is very useful. Uh, it's a, uh, And it's a default key binding here. So mod and space, focus mode, toggle and what it means is that you just toggle between tiled windows and floating windows so pressing just mod plus space now you can see the floating window has focus now the tiled window has slow focus because this is something that uh, if, if you want to focus uh, a floating window from a tile window it's you cannot use directions or anything like that you have to use this to switch to the floating layer so to speak don't remember how it works if you have multiple floating windows. Uh, let's make some terminals and let's make them floating. Let's make one more floating like that. Because I think, or maybe you cannot do that with VisWiz now. If I focus right, no, it, well, this works. Yeah, 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 this works. This was good. I think it works. Uh, you can use remember i3 flip to change uh, windows in the same group that works for no it didn't work i should add that because i remember i got that working once but apparently it doesn't work now so if you want to switch between multiple floating windows i'm sorry i cannot help you at the moment but um, i will make a note to add that to i3 flip because that makes sense to use that to switch here and and it's not a big deal to add that uh, whatever and I'm not sure, uh, let, let's just quickly enable that. I just got curious here now to see if it works with the default key bindings. So that can be something, but you know, uh, it's very rare uh, in, uh, that's why I, ha I didn't even realize this now, because I never have more than one floating window <laughs> and very seldom even one, you know. So now I activated the default focus key bindings there, reload the config and if I, move the focus to the left yeah that works okay so you can actually do this with the default focus so that's a drawback here at the moment with i3 this with but i will add this to i3 flip um that's on the top of top of the list of, of features to add here whatever it's i i don't believe it's a big deal uh, that you cannot switch focus between uh, multiple floating windows but i should add it and i will add it now i have also said that good uh, and I actually didn't realize this. I, I thought I had that with i3 flip. Um, okay, okay, okay. This i3 feed layout, uh, special layout thing, uh, to activate that, you replace the toggle floating key binding with uh, i3 feed float, a command that's um, yeah called that. So exec. And again, no startup ID i3 feed up float. There, reload the config. And then now I can press super shift space. Toggles float. This is floating. This is floating. This is floating. It uh, works exactly the same, you know, it toggles flo float mode. But with the difference that if you do this uh, on w on a floating window, it will uh, automatically create the i3 feeder layout if it doesn't exist. 
Um, you will see here now. If I do the same thing again, um, mod, shift, and space, it's tiled. Okay, same thing. Do it again on this terminal. It's tiled. And you can see it also places it in a tab. It's, it's like no other hint that this is actually happening here, but you will see what this actually means. It's, it's a... Uh, this is a big, big change in 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 uh, how I three works when you have this active. Uh, and for this to work here, you also really need uh, um, I three corn set up here, because now, as I mentioned, when you move a, a tiled window, it will uh, just move it normally, except if it is on the I three fira workspace. Because that's also important to understand that i3 Fira is only active on one workspace. And that is this workspace now. Um, so if I move this and if everything is working, praying to the demo guys, okay, come on, please let's make this work now. If I move this to the left by using uh, mod shift left, should move with speed zero also, notice. Uh, move it to the left. Please work. This happens. Good. Seems to be working. Um, but it did exactly what what you would expect uh, expect it to do, right? Moved it out of the tab group because it was the leftmost uh, window in the tab group. If I move this to the left again, then this happens. Now it did hide the whole tab group there to the right. If I move to the left again, it shows that tab group. And we can toggle it now with left. Uh, if I move this window to the right with that tab group hidden, <coughs> you see this happens. Now I toggle to the right. Um, let's move it to the left. Let's uh, shift focus to right. So we get this. Let's move this one up. This happens. And now I, I can toggle these because now we have one uh, group here, we have one group here, and one group here. So if I press up here with this window active, ah, wrong. The thing is, uh, or whatever, if I move this upwards, it toggles the container below. And it also is supposed to remember um, the split sizes here, which I call this. So if I toggle the group below now, you see, it uh, resizes it uh, to the correct size here, uh, the last known size of this split. Uh, and I3 Fira, it's called I3 Fira because Fira is the Swedish uh, word for number four. So it, it, it's a hint on what how this works. It four different tabbed containers will are used, and the, it's only four containers that are allowed actually. And that is why I can do this by just moving this window to the right, for example, since I only can have four containers. Now we don't have the fourth. Let, let's create that as well. So I create a new terminal here, super return, move that one. We can move it up. And now we have that. Maybe I want to resize that a bit. I hold sup mod control and pressing down uh, to resize down on a tiled window, that means shrink height, so that would shrink this like this. Nice, no entering any modes or anything. And now you can see this kind of looks like my uh, normal layout. And now we have four containers here. The A container, the B container, C container and the D container. The D container just happens to have two tabs, it doesn't matter. Uh, and if this for example, have focus and I move that to the right. Since only four containers are allowed, uh, it will not move it to the right. It will instead hide the containers to the left. I know it's it sounds like a lot, but it I have experimented quite a lot to get this get to this point here, uh, and I think it 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 is very intuitive. This and and you can use the same key bindings. You just use move left uh, and move up, move down. You know. It will be a bit awkward uh, in the beginning, and it it doesn't do what you what it used to do. It doesn't move this left out of the uh, layout here. Instead, it does this. But if you would move it right, then this happens. No, wrong key. The, okay, the thing is, I'm pressing the wrong key button here all all the time. 
in my default uh, configuration, I have actually focus is mod plus shift direction and move is uh, without shift. So that is uh, the other way around here. So I, I'm often now uh, focusing when I want to move and the other way around. But if we move this to the left, uh, mod shift left, you see it moved it to the left and the, that seemed to work uh, as expected, you know. And now it actually removed that A container. Now that doesn't exist. Um, but we could move a different window, for example, this one out into A if we want to, so, or B container. So uh, move this upwards and then it's there. And it also, it still remembers the size of that container. And you can toggle them, everything works fine. And you can even do this. So if I toggle that container uh, above us there by moving this container, you know, this one, if I move that down and then I move it up, now I have switched place of them, as you can see. And you can even switch place of multiple containers like this. It, it just works. And you need i3 corn for this to work. And you also need to have, the, uh, have created the layout with this floating, changing the way you toggle floating. Uh, but if we go to a different workspace here, for example, workspace three, I create a terminal here, create one more. You see the, it's just a normal layout here. There's no tab containers. You cannot do that stuff here. And if I move this container here to the uh, right, for example, nothing happens because it is already uh, to the far right. But if I move it to the left, moves it here, move it to the left, moves it here. There, what I want to get to is that uh, this stuff, toggling containers and stuff like that, it only works on one workspace and it, that will not change in any foreseeable future um, because it gets too complicated to, to get all of that working on multiple workspaces. And the thing is, you probably don't want that because sometimes I, I prefer this layout, of course, and this uh, way of, of managing windows, you know, it's, uh, it's really powerful. To, to be able to hide containers and they they um, have the same size, they retain the tab. So it actually, it, it's not just that it toggles a window, it toggles both of these, this whole tab group and stuff like that. There's a lot of things happening in the background uh, I3S uh, is doing. Uh, 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 and I, I, I use this all the time for, for like 99% of, of my computer usage. I want this mode, uh, but it only works on one, one workspace. But there are things that you might want to do uh, without this functionality. Just a normal workspace, uh, you, maybe for GIMP or audio editing or playing a game or something like that. You just don't need or want these uh, features. And then all other workspaces just work like they used to. And that is what i3 Corn, it, uh, it knows this. It knows which workspace uh, is this special one, the i3 FIDA workspace, uh, and which are not. So you can still use the same key binding. They work as expected. And you see, it's the same key bindings over and over again. It's the directions, uh, left, down, up, right. Uh, I do almost all, everything with them. Um, so I don't, you don't have to keep that many things uh, in mind. Of course, it is. So, uh, you need to get used to it. It takes, it takes a while, but it's uh, not a big deal in my opinion to do that. Um, now I'm not sure here which container is which here, but let's let's do this. Um, move that there, there, and then shift focus to the right. Move that up and then down. I think this is like the normal layout here now. Because the last thing I want to add is this um, layout thing. Um, and that can be nice to have as a key bind or in a variable. So we create a new variable. We can call it a default layout or something like that. And then let's paste this here. And then we can create a key binding. Bind sim mod plus p is what I like to use for this. Um, exec no start up id i3 theta layout and then we pass the default layout here notice that it's important to use the 
uh, quotes around this layout. It can be double quotes, it doesn't matter, but you need to put this in quotes, uh, either uh, as the variable here, or you could also, th this also works, of course, like this. Uh, we save this and then reload the config. Seems to be working. Uh, yeah, now it will almost have this size. But let's say you have resized uh, windows like a, like a crazy person. Something like this, you know. Looks like this, looks like maybe this. And then we can focus here and we can resize that like that. Now, if I press this uh, mod plus P key binding, it will execute, whoa, typo, i34, reload config. If I press this uh, mod plus P uh, key binding, it will execute i34 uh, and uh, apply this layout. So this is what will happen. Mod uh, plus P. It resized it to this layout. Now it got a bit weird. It wasn't exactly what I uh, anticipated here because I had messed up uh, the order of the of the containers. I didn't know which one was A, which one was B. I just guessed there and I was guessing wrong. Uh, I actually wanted Sublime to be the large window and uh, yeah, it, a, a bit different here. Uh, the thing is, it's uh, when you're doing it like we are doing it now, we're just using the uh, changing um, or creating this layout by using um, a, a float toggling like this. Then the layout is automatically created, you know, and it's difficult to know if uh, Sublime, for instance, here is in the A container or the B container or whatever container it is. I, I said that this is A, this is B, this is C, this is D. But that is um, there is uh, some some uh, uh, um, other stuff going on in the background uh, that that doesn't really have to be the case. Uh, it, it's it gets a bit complicated to, to explain it because it 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 actually changes the containers uh, when you move them around like this. It's even if this is always A, A is always the top left uh, container, but it keeps track of the original position of the container. So it also have a like a virtual position. So, uh, and that is just to, to make things like this. So that should work fine. Uh, because this container here, that is the original A container and this is the original C container. I know it gets weird. Let, 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 let's let's add them as the uh, containers. Uh, so this or this should be here and like that, like that, like that. I managed to do this the complete opposite way of how I had uh, envisioned it. So and move this upwards and then select tab there and select sublime and move that there. Okay, this <laughs> this is how I like it. And you saw it was quite easy for me to move the windows around, change this into what I wanted. Uh, but now it should always uh, do what I want it to do here. Mod P. It resets to this layout here, according to these uh, numbers here. And how they work are AB is equal to minus 350. And AB, that is the split between the A container and the B container. A container, B container, this is a split. And as you can see, this is kind of the main split because it's, yeah, it's connected to all four windows, actually, this one. Uh, while these splits, they are only connected to two uh, windows or containers here. Uh, and they are the other ones here. So A, C, that is uh, this split here. And B, D, that is this split here. So what this is, is the size of those splits. Minus 350 here. That means 350 pixels uh, to the right of the screen. And 220, that's a... a Y position or a vertical position here. So that's 220 pixels from the top of the screen and 252 that is 250 pixels from the top of the screen, but it applies to this split here. Uh, and what I meant here with virtual positions and stuff like that is that even if I would change this around here um, like this and maybe even uh, this and this 
and change some sizes and stuff here, you will see that it will still uh, figure out the correct windows to resize the, the, the way you want. It, it might look very confusing this, but it is actually great. Uh, it, I'm, I, it, and it was very difficult to add those vertical position thing there. So that's just how it works now, uh, but it works fine. And now it, it actually do work uh, fine here, finally. I don't think it have ever uh, worked as fine as it does now. Uh, I made this whole video here now. I don't know how long it is now. It must be over an hour. Yeah, 125. There have actually not been any bugs or anything, any issues, any unexpected uh, stuff here from the scripts. Uh, the layout was created. That has never really worked. I realized that when I fixed uh, the last issue here. Uh, yeah, now it got a bit weird. It's probably a cute browser that has bugged out here for some reason. Um, yeah, because this is a cute, this is like an artifact from, from Workspace uh, 2 here. I switched to Workspace 3 because I wanted to show you something in the browser, but it uh, looks like Q browser have, it's broken. I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, kill all cute browsers. Kill all aggressive nine. There, okay. I don't know, there is something uh, Q browser may or may not like uh, this stuff that I'm doing now, but wh whatever. Uh, and if that's the case, uh, I haven't really experienced this before, but the thing is I never switch workspaces and stuff like that. So maybe there is an issue with this. Uh, and that's not something that I will fix because that's that's up to Q browser in that case. Um, and that, then I will probably switch browser if this is uh, how it is. I, I, I don't know. I have no idea what happened there. Um, we could actually move this now to Workspace 2, by the way. GSR uh, Theta Workspace. And this is how I like to have it. And then I have... Because when you have this layout, it's it kind of replaces workspaces in a way. Because otherwise you might want to, you might have like uh, the editor on one workspace and you have uh, the browser on another. So you have something like this. So, oh, this is my browser workspace. This is uh, my development workspace, you know, and this is, this is where I have terminals when I need to go uh, you, you do some remote access to my elite servers and stuff like that. You know, that's, that's how people want you to think that you're supposed to use tiling window managers. Uh, but it's, I find workspaces to be a very confusing and annoying concept to, to use most of the time. And it's, it makes more sense to have everything on the same workspace and use tabs instead. So now I am on my development workspace. Now I am on my browser workspace and you can still have like your, your other windows here because let's say you have uh, your IRC application open or whatever here. So EDC, for example, here. That can be related to your editor uh, development stuff that can be related to this. And sometimes you you want to test something in this terminal. Sometimes you don't and you do then you do this. And sometimes you want it full screen, so to speak. You just hide, toggle the, the side panels like that. And then you can bring them back when you need them. When you get a notification from the IRC or whatever. Um, it's just one workspace and you can switch here between the different main tabs as I like to treat these uh, with just uh, those that uh, uh, mod tab key binding, the i3 flip key binding, you know, this one. Um, um, I, I don't know, I, I, this is completely ingrained in, in my workflow. So this is how I, I, I almost never use multiple workspaces. It's just for... GIMP and when I play a game, I like to place them on on a uh, on their own workspace, and most of the time just use them full screen, you know. Uh, but browser, editor, video, watching videos, I usually place them in in this uh, container here because remember all of these are tabbed also. So if I if I would open a a, a video here, that that's fine. Uh, I should also mention that, of course, if you want to change the layout of these uh, groups here, which are tabbed by default, creating some terminals here, creating some terminals here, they are all in tabs because that's uh, the best uh, layout. But if you sometimes you, you don't want a, a tabbed uh, layout, 
Uh, let's do it here, for instance. Focus up, create a terminal here. If I want to, I can change this layout with the mod E uh, binding. And now it is split here and it still works. Uh, you can still do this. You can toggle that container uh, because the par that's what it's all about. It's the parent containers that you, you are only allowed to have four parent containers on this workspace in with this layout. So it sounds like, a, oh, I don't, I, I actually need to have like six, uh, uh, six uh, containers open at the same time. It's no problem. You can do this if you want to. Uh, or maybe even split it like this. No, you, you know, this is a very complicated layout. It's still uh, super easy to manage uh, with i 3 Fira. You can work with something like this and you can have it on a single workspace without any issues, in my opinion. And if you, uh, okay, I'm done here with that layout, then you can just change it back to tab if you want to do that, whatever. Uh, just use this uh, example config here. I will link this in the show notes, this page here, this wiki page, because this is exactly what we have done in this video. Setting up everything is uh, the same thing here. Uh, or let's let's uh, review it here so to see that I haven't missed anything. One thing that is different is that it uses the arrow keys here by default. So it have the variables, but the arrow keys are enabled by default. If you want to use the VI navigation, just uh, comment these lines out and uncomment this uh, Hackerman VI navigation, enable with caution. Um, floating state, we have done that. Uh, split sizes, we have done that. Um, yeah, this is yeah, this is the last th last thing then I guess. Because in this example config, uh, here you can see, uh, we execute this layout command without any key binding. And that means that this command will get executed when i3 is uh, started. It's not executed every time you reload the config, so it will not work if we do it here now. I have to restart i3 and stuff, and I don't, I really don't want to do that. Uh, but if you put this line in, in your config exec, and then the same command uh, as we use to, to reset the, the layout, you know, uh, mod p. Uh, if you just execute that layout command, uh, then it will have those uh, split sizes will be uh, kind of declared bef even before you create the layout. So, so otherwise, the default uh, split sizes are just 50%. Uh, and that's, that's something that's nice to, to have set up, I, I believe, to just add this as a startup command. Uh, here is that key binding. And I, I the keys here, by the way, that I use, like mod plus P to set this split size. I, I'm not sure why I, need, I use that. You can use a different key binding, of course. It, I, I don't care, and it doesn't matter. Same thing with this uh, mod plus tab and mod W and Q. To me, they make sense, but maybe they don't to you. And maybe you have a different key binding here. Maybe you have the web browser and have had that for like 10 years on, on the Windows key and W. Then you don't want to do this and then use a different key binding or don't use it at all or whatever, you know. They, it's just settings. Uh, and this is the thing. I I, I always hesitate on, on making videos about configuration files like this and because it's... It's very personal, what you prefer, maybe, and also here, of course, uh, in my personal config, when I move and resize windows here, I, I actually have three uh, different uh, speeds. So I have three key bindings to, to resize here, or three sets of key bindings. So I have a, a mod and control, and that will resize with uh, uh, speed 30 or something like that. Then I had uh, have mod uh, shift control, that is like speed, uh, resize with speed five. And then I have, uh, I think maybe mod alt or something like that. And that is speed 50, something like that I have. And I have the same thing set up here in the mode. Now in this example, there's only two uh, speeds like 30 and five, but it's, you can add more. And it's, if you do, it's probably a good idea to put these speeds in variables as well. So it's easy to figure out what suits you best, you know. Um, but this uh, configuration, it's a good starting point if you want to start using uh, or try out i3 uh, as an i3 FIDA layout here. Um, I guess I, I recommend if you want to try this, um, either if you know uh, if you're good at setting up i3 and stuff, you can just uh, 
make a backup of your normal configuration and then just try this out just to see that this works you know create a bunch of terminals uh, toggle the floating state and then you will immediately be in this uh, uh, thing here you know uh, or you could use a virtual set up a virtual machine you know uh, install i3 and just uh, try it out there if that's what you want to do i I don't know, I don't care, it's a good uh, a starting point no, nonetheless, this. And we have changed this, yes. And then you have the untouched uh, um, settings from the config that we haven't changed or talked about at all, and we will not talk about it now either, but you can change other things in i3, of course, like the font and stuff like that. This one, important, if you use Hackerman VI navigation, you will need to change this key binding mod plus H because that clashes with yeah mod H. And maybe that's one of the reasons why they have decided that they want to use like JKL semicolon. I, I don't know, I, I don't care anymore. Um, at the bottom of this uh, example configuration are all the default key bindings uh, de declared in, in i3 but commented out here so you can uh, and also with, with short comments what what have replaced them so floating toggle is replaced by i3 feed up float here and this is the original original key binding and so on so it's easy to um, kind of restore the defaults if you don't like some of the features maybe you just don't think that i3 corn or flow toggling or whatever makes any sense just feel free to use the default one uh, the thing is that they are they all work independently except for i3 fida because if you use i3 fida you you more or less need to also move windows with i3 corn um but it i3 corn works so that it shouldn't really or of course uh, if it's a floating window uh, it is a bit different when you move them, but in my opinion, it's uh, it's just this is better. Uh, the only difference is that you can see the position and uh, you you get this move mode for floating windows, which I think makes more sense. But whatever, if you don't really don't want that, you have to configure that as well. Uh, it's possible, but uh, you have to move tiled windows with i3 corn if you are using this layout. Other than that, you can use all of them independently. And you, if, if you don't use, if you find this layout, it, it's like, yeah, I don't want that. I, I, I don't think that's a good idea to be able to toggle tile containers. That's, that's, that's bad. You should not do this, you know, it's who would like to do that? If you don't want to do that, don't do that. And then you don't need to use i 3 to move tile windows. Okay, fine. Uh, and that's it. That's it for this video. I managed to get through it without messing up, without the need to uh, <laughs> make a panic update to i3s itself here. Let's have a look at those releases I made here in the last uh, 24, 48 hours or something here. So one of them was this Amoebius uh, Fira fix, which was an issue when you uh, with this float toggling and automatically creating the, the layout and specifically when you, yeah, whatever, move a, a container out of one group to create a new one that didn't work and it, it have probably never really worked. There were also problems with, um, because the default i3 config, uh, the, the workspaces, they are named. Uh, and they are named uh, completely logical, you know, it shouldn't be a problem. Workspace one is named one, but it's actually the string one with double quotes here. And that messed things up for me. I didn't realize this, uh, that that was an issue uh, because you actually don't need the double quotes. Even if it's a word, you don't need the double quotes, I, I believe. Maybe, maybe, not. whatever. It's so weird to name workspaces. I, I really don't like the workspace uh, feature. As you might have noticed, but that is fixed now. So you can, and, and you can of course rename the workspaces if you want to do that. So if you want to call workspace seven uh, balloon instead, you can just change that here in the i3 config reload. Now we can send this uh, floating window to workspace seven. So mod shift seven didn't work. Mod shift one seven mod one mod. Okay, it didn't work, whatever. I, <laughs> I I actually don't know why it's not working. Whatever, it's not related to this video. Why did I show this? Why, why did I do that? Cut, cut that part. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> I fixed that. Another thing I, I realized was uh, with i3 corn, when you resize a tile window, God damn it! now it doesn't work. Oh, oh there it works. I, I just hadn't declared a uh, uh, mod control and shift, but it works. Uh, but I realized that if you, for some reason, start resizing a window or moving a window or whatever, when you do this, uh, in the background, a FIFO file is created. And if you manage to exit the i3 session while that FIFO file exists, because it will automatically get deleted when you exit the mode and, and uh, stuff like that. But it, in corner cases, that file could actually still exist when you exit out of i3. And then it will also exist when you uh, restart i3 if you don't restart the computer. Uh, so it's it's kind of a weird corner case, but I actually encountered that when doing that demo, uh, the last demo video here, uh, and that was a, a real issue that made i3 corn stop working completely. So I have fixed that as well by by making the FIFO unique, uh, giving it a unique name that it can keep track of. Um, i3 viswis it didn't work at all uh, if. Um, if there was no mark on the root container, which is also a weird thing, you know. But the thing is, in my normal workflow setup, I always have uh, I have a lot of marks on my root container, and we do that now as well because that is how i3 FIDA keeps track of, for example, to know that this container here is uh, the size of it. it. It stores that on marks on the root container, for example. But if no such marks existed, then i 3 viswis just got stuck and you couldn't focus windows or do anything with it. I didn't know about that issue. I have fixed it now. So that's good. That's what I... Uh, <laughs> so this is... I guess this is take four then. Because these are three individual videos. Uh, this same video that you are watching now. I tried to record it, but then it broke down uh, related to these uh, 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 things. Okay. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. I don't know if we... In one way, you know, I, I have actually made this video. Um, it was one of the first videos I made on my YouTube channel. I showed you how to set up i3 to uh, enable this i 3 s and stuff like that. Uh, but a lot of things have changed in uh, how i 3 s works. But at the same time, I think that video is still valid. It's the same configuration and you can do the same things basically now. I, I might have added and changed like small things like how i3 viswis and i3 flip and stuff works, but most of it is valid. Uh, and when I made that video, that is kind of when the Let's Linux series started, uh, because I, I thought, hey, now we got this good uh, base configuration. Why not just keep on rising on this config uh, this uh, i3 config here so in the next video i change some colors and stuff like that and then the next video after that we set up rofi and stuff things like that you know i've been thinking about maybe just rebooting that series and and uh, yeah rise rise the desktop based on this config uh, we might do that but it might also not happen who knows you will see in the next video what that is about. Uh, have a great day. Bye, bye, bye.